Welcome, welcome everybody to a new Alchemy Stars video and guys today I want to talk about the three new characters that we got in this new event with a bunch of very difficult names that I cannot pronounce for the life of me. So let's get started right away because I have a lot to say about all of them. Really, I have a lot to say about these characters. So we're going to start with the welfare boys Hachi and Jin. They're, they're Thunder Snipers from Umbraton and I must say that I'm pretty tired of Thunder Units. Please, Tour Dog, stop with the thund Thunder Units. I'm really, really done with Thunder Units. But, uh, you know, it's just a personal thing. But anyways, I complain about it every single video, so I'm sure you guys are sick of that. So uh, let's, let's go into their abilities to see uh, what they can do. So their active skill is called Perfect Heist. And it, ha it has a skill, condition a skill cooldown too. And it says select a traversable tile on which to summon Jin and determine his direction. Then throw one grenade in this direction. This grenade can bounce again to the furthest distant po distance possible in Jin's selected direction. The grenade deals 200% damage to enemies it passes along the way. All right, so it's it's a very unintuitive description for their active skill. It's much easier to understand once you're in game, but. Their chain skill, they only have two chain skills, unfortunately. Uh, it's called Brotherly Bond, and they have a chain combo 4 that throws a grenade at the nearest two enemies, dealing 125% damage, and they also have a chain combo 9 that does the same thing, but 140% damage. So yeah, pretty unfortunate that it's only two uh, chains, but they're pretty well distributed, so it's not a big deal. Uh, then their equipment is Accomplice. For each cluster, grenades travel before active skill deals damage, final damage increases by 6%. Again, very, very wacky wording here. So as you can see, they're pretty well equipped to deal with multi-tile enemies, and their kit is actually, in my opinion, the most interesting one in this new batch of characters. Let's go to their ascensions. So their ascension 2 gives them a little bit of extra damage to their chain combo through their equipment. And this is nice, but not as impactful as the extra damage on their active, since you have a lot more freedom when it comes to positioning yourself with your active than moving around the map to position yourself for your chains. Their Ascension 3 is actually a little confusing again. This They didn't do a very good job of uh, translating the abilities for these characters. So I'm not sure how this Ascension 3 actually impacts their flexibility when using their active, but I suspect that it probably helps against enemies that occupy a whole side of the map, like uh, the dragon for example, or, um, or enemies that are sitting in corners and are impossible to reach without this Ascension 3. Alright, so their only BT gives them preemptive, which for a damaging skill is actually welcome. Uh, it's a nice addition to the character that you will most likely get in a couple of weeks or if you summon all the time like I do, right? Um, so for their overall score, I actually gave them a solid 8. They're a good unit and a sniper that's actually going to help you with multi-tile enemies and they're not going to deal the most damage in the world because they're a 4 star obviously but they will definitely help you out if you need a thunder sniper. Moving on, no, moving on now to Cordy. I'm sorry, <laughs> I know. I'm going to pronounce uh, this name with my native accent, Cordy because I have absolutely no clue whatsoever how to say her name in English. With that out of the way, Cordy is actually a 5-star fire detonator from Illumina, and I must say that at this point I'm actually pretty disappointed in the designs that we've gotten for this batch of Aurorians, not only for Cordy and Hachin Jin, but also for, for Heidi that we're gonna get into later. It's just, they're incredibly simplistic compared to other much more elaborate designs that we've gotten just a couple of weeks ago. I mean, why don't you go ahead and compare the new uh, A3 arts for Heidi, Cordy, and Hachi and Jin with Luke, Bethels, and Pitmans? There's just no point of comparison. There's, there really isn't. So they really took a dip in quality this time around. Hopefully it's just a hiccup and they can recover from this. So yeah, it's quite a step down in quality, but I have to wonder also if they actually did this on purpose to help those of us or those of you that want to save for the queen that's coming in two weeks. So think about that. Maybe maybe this is 
Maybe this is actually to help players, not to not to be cheap or anything like that. Uh, not that I'm accusing them of being cheap. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> but uh, back to Cordy. So her active skill is actually going to be Sheriff or Order. I hate this character. <laughs> uh, so she has a one turn cooldown and she deals 160% damage to one enemy within one surrounding cluster. When attacking the same target for the first time, Paralyze is inflicted for one round. When attacking that same enemy a second time, stun is inflicted for one round. And then we have her chain skills. So her chain skills are called Reign of Fire and she has a chain combo 2, 8 and 11 that deal 165% damage, 180 and 185% damage to one surrounding cluster, 12 tiles in a diamond shape and 16 tiles in a, diam in a radial shape. And her equipment is patrol duty, and for every one enemy within two tiles, I mean 12 tiles in a diamond shape, attack increases by 2%. As you can see, she is actually a detonator that doesn't detonate much. She is more like a short-sighted sniper with a detonator chain, in my opinion. So the main issue with Cordy is that she needs an enemy stuck right next to her in order to use her ability. And again, she's a detonator with an active that can only hit one enemy. So granted, if that enemy is vulnerable to CC, you basically get a free kill. And if it's just a boss that's vulnerable to CC, a free stage, in fact. Um, so let's see if her ascensions can give her more flavor. Her ascension 2 gives her a damage buff to her active based on how big the enemy she is hitting is. So this is nice and will definitely come in handy against multi-tile bosses. It also reinforces her identity as a single target detonator slash supporter, right? And um, her Ascension 3 increases the range of her equipment buff. Her equipment buff, by the way, is a little weird since it works better when you're facing mobs. But as we said, Cordy actually, Cordy actually prefers to fight bosses. So not the most synergistic equipment we've ever seen. Her BTs are fairly simple. BT2 gives her more damage to her active and her BT5 gives her two stuns instead of a stun and a paralysis. BT2 is not worth going for, but BT5 is amazing and definitely worth going for. If you tried her in her trial with the new event, you'll know that she's basically going to trivialize bosses that are vulnerable to CC if she's at BT5. She can turn Elysium stages into a joke. For her overall score, is it's going to be an 8 out of 10 because of several reasons, despite what I just said. So the most obvious reason is that you need to close ranks with your enemies and tank at least one hit unless you're running a bunch of fire teleporters. And she requires a bit of planning, quite a bit of planning actually. Um, another reason is that her damage is fairly lackluster despite her being a detonator, which once again points to the fact that they should have made her a support unit, but for some reason they felt that she needed the detonator brand on her, I, I don't know. And uh, finally, even though she's going to be amazing against some bosses, she's also going to be virtually useless against enemies that are invulnerable to CC. But despite all of that, Cordy is definitely going to be worth summoning for since the stages where she's good, she is a goddess. A, an absolute goddess. So, And now we finally move to the last character of this batch. Green Carlene. I'm sorry. I mean... Heidi, yes, <laughs> that's that's what I'm going to call her, Heidi, because I have no clue how to pronounce her actual name. She is Heidi, okay? So Heidi, Heidi is a six-star forest Aurorian from Lumopolis with a pretty uninspired design and a literally copy-pasted kit. Heidi does have a few extra, you know, things. Uh, I would say maybe there's a little bit of power creep there because she's definitely a little bit better than Carlene in my opinion. But um, but yeah, it's still exactly the same core. We'll see when we go through her abilities. But I don't know what happened here, uh, Tour Dog. Really, like the quality of this uh, of the characters in this event really, really went down. But again, hopefully it's just a hiccup before we go into the six months anniversary that's coming actually in two weeks. So Heidi's active skill is actually going to be a four turn cooldown called Lumen, 
and she teleports to a selected location and deals 250% damage to one column and knocks enemies back, converting tiles in the area of attack to green. Her chain skills are Nimble Knight, and she has a chain combo 4, 9 and 13 that deal 110, 120 and 130% damage to 12 tiles, 16 tiles and 2 surrounding clusters in a diamond shape and radial shape. Um, I never know what's the best way to read their chains to make it, like, concise. Uh, and then her equipment is Pompey Maxima, and when using chain combos and active skills, Pompey will show up and attack instead of Heidi. Pompey's attack is equal to 105% of Heidi's attack, 120 if you have your equipment maxed out. Um, so Pompey, if you guys don't know, Pompey is actually the, the huge piece of armor that's right next to her in her, um in her art, so yeah, that's Pompey for you. Her equipment is actually much better than it might seem at first glance. The fact that her chains and active apply their multipliers on another multiplier means that she should be able to deal a ton of damage even though the percentages on her chains are fairly low. But this is just the tip of the iceberg, let's, let's keep going. Let's see what her ascensions have to say. Her Ascension 2 is going to give her even more multipliers against enemies that are close to her. Remember that this is a multiplier on top of a multiplier on top of a multiplier. She should be doing ungodly amounts of damage at this point, but we still have her Ascension 3, which of course, it's another multiplier. So at the end of the day, if you have Heidi at Ascension 3 with max equipment, and you get an Aurora time, and then you get enough tiles, you'll actually get a 120% multiplier on her attack, then a 30% multiplier on top of that, then a 130% multiplier on top of that, then a 20% multiplier on top of that, and she's going to use a chain, she's basically going to use a chain combo, and she's going to uninstall Alchemy Stars from your phone, if not your life altogether, like, Holy crap, she's going to deal <laughs> ungodly amounts of damage. It's ridiculous. So let's look at her BTs now because she's not done. So her BT3 gives her a, redu gives her a reduced cooldown. And considering that it's already a pretty damn good converting ability and teleporting ability, uh, that's also going to deal a lot of damage on top of that, I would say that this BT is not only worth, but a must go. For, uh, must. It's actually a must if you have to. Uh, or if you are going to summon for Heidi, right? So, yeah, it's not only worth, but a must. And then her BT6 gives her preemptive strike. And uh, she's a converter and a teleporter, guys. Need I say more? So, absolutely worth going for. Absolutely. Her BT6 is definitely worth going for. It's not a must, but it's, it's definitely worth going for if you want to. And uh, overall, for her score, despite her uninspired design, and her copy-pasted kit, she does have enough uniqueness to make her damage skyrocket so hard that using her chain combo should be a crime against humanity. On top of that, she is also a teleporter and a converter, and a good one at that. I didn't touch much on this part of her being a teleporter and a converter, because I assume you guys already know how amazing that is, right? So I would say Heidi is definitely definitely worth your flares 100 percent she is a 10 out of 10 i'm only going going to give her a 9 out of 10 because of her really uninspired design and art but she's definitely a 10 out of 10 in terms of damage and utility absolutely uh so should you summon for this banner yes yes i think the answer is yes it, this banner is absolutely worth going for. The only, only reason I could possibly come up with as for why you wouldn't want to summon on this banner is, like I said, the lackluster art and design, but I already crapped enough on that. But if you're going for meta slash utility, this banner is unparalleled. This is one of the best banners when it comes to uh, DPS units and uh, utility units, amazing, amazing, great stuff. That's going to be it for this video, I hope you guys enjoyed, leave a like if you did, leave a comment, what do you think, are you are you going to summon for them, did you pull them, and uh, subscribe if you like more videos like this guys, and I'll see you on the next one.